the most basic question on multi-threading in Java interviews is to how to create threads in Java. Most of the websites have covered only two ways, that is using threads and runnable. But we, we have four ways to create threads in Java. The first two are extending thread class and implementing runnable. These were introduced in first versions of Java and in java.lang package. Then we have uh, uh, callable which is there from Java 1.5 and added in java.util.concurrent package. This was added because Runnable does not have uh, any return type and cannot throw any exception. Okay, so the last one is method references, which is there from Java 8. And if any interviewer asks you question like how to create threads in Java 8, you must reply this as your answer along with the lambda expression uh, using Runnable. Okay, now we'll go to the coding part. So I have a class Java Tutor. Here first I'll use extending thread. So here I'll create a, a public static class, you know, that will extend thread class. I will uh, override run method here. So I'll just print the thread name here. Yeah, so this is my run method. Now I'll call, I'll call this, uh, I'll start this thread from my main method. For that, I'll create instance of a thread class. So here I'll provide the thread name also. Now I'll just call the start method. So before calling start, I'll print the current thread name, which should be main. So I'm displaying a thread name before starting my thread and after starting my thread and in between I'm calling thread.start. So let's run this. Yeah, this is it. So thread name before starting is main, after starting is main and then my th vulgar thread is my thread. So if you want your main thread to wait till thread finishes its execution, then you can use join. I, th I hope you know about this. So you can add exception. Uh, check the exception in the method signature so let's run this yeah you can see that before then worker thread and then after so this was the first approach now we'll move to the second one which is implementing runnable so i'll comment out my first approach so in runnable also will we have to override run method and we'll do the same thing so runnable is a functional interface it has only one method which is run so now so every other code is exactly same so when we call this it should print the same output yeah so with java 8 we have a different way you know to create to uh, create threads with uh, runnable because runnable is a functional interface so you can directly call lambda expression here Okay, here in Unique, you, know, you can pass this code. I'll comment out this class. So your run functionality will go inside this lambda expression and you have provided your thread name as my thread. So let's run this. Output should still be same. Yeah, this is it. Now the third thing, third approach is using callable. So I'll create a different. So, so inside uh, my callable, I'll create. I'll create a callable task. So we want to return a string type from uh, the call method that's why we added uh, a string value here and uh, uh, we don't need exceptions here I can remove that so in the return I will be returning 
let's say a success message as a string now you cannot use callable directly with the thread class for this you have to use executor service so let's create a callable task so you cannot use callable directly with the third with the, with the thread class so you have to use executor service so i'll write a main method here i'll I've created a few new fixed thread pools of size 2. When you call future dot get, it should return you. The result from call method so I'll add a method signature I'll add a check it exception in the method signature so yeah this is it so let's just print this value you can see that result of call method is success okay so this call method you know can return success by calling any REST API or by doing any computation or by reading any file yeah this way you can implement now the last one is uh, method references okay so in Java 8 uh, you can use method reference uh, of a method which can be a static or an instance method so there are two conditions that method should not take any parameter and it should have a return type of void no param void return type so let's just create one such method I'll create it a static method it should have void return type And it should not create it it should not have any parameter so let's just say that I'm printing I'll print the same thing what I was doing with the thread and runnable okay. now this thing method is created I'll call thread class in my main method so in this thread you you have to call this uh, static method through method references this is done now we have to start this thread so when you call start the code inside this method will be executed by a new thread okay so the similar way let's just you know print the thread name before and after yeah now let's run this uh, you can see the same result here so we have not provided any name with our worker thread so it it has printed thread 0 so thread name before starting should be main and after starting should be main yeah this is it from from this question so subscribe for more multi-threading interview questions